Okay, just real quick from the last video, uh, one of the things I did is I did make a jump um, little uh, grouping here to make sure that I stayed clean and organized. And uh, I made it green because something happens. I don't know, that's just helpful for me. When I make sure something's happened on my player, I want to know by green. So whatever system you have will work. We have an issue though, when we jump, we are able to double jump and it's not playing the information. And so the way that we're gonna fix this is we're gonna do what's called a ground check. And the way that they explain this is, is that you can do a thing in Unity called a ray cast. You can do this on 2D and 3D. But on 2D, you ray cast this way, that way, this way, or that way. So north, south, east, or west. And uh, what we wanna do is we wanna send a ray cast downwards to the platform. Now, if you remember, um, we had to set up our layers because when we downloaded it, it wasn't done correctly. Hopefully they'll update that and that won't be necessary anymore. You can just go right to the tutorial and won't have to do any of that. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to send a ray down and if it collides, then we need it to not, then we can unlock our jump again. So until it does that, we're not going to be able to jump again. This is essentially what it's explaining. And then it's going to explain the way that it's going to do that is to set up what's called a circle cast instead of a ray cast. And the reason why you want to use a circle cast, they explain a little bit better down here, I think, is that supposedly that's more reliable. We'll set up a 0.3 radius of our circle. So it's essentially a line, but it can be a little bit more reliable. That's all that is. That's why you have a radius in there of 0.3 instead of just a ray. Send out a line. It's, it's fixing that with a circle. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and start setting up this graph on how to uh, set up a circle cast that we can ensure that um, it's not gonna be able to jump until uh, it reaches the ground again. We don't want double jump, we just want one jump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to add unit here and do a circle cast. Physics 2D circle cast. We need origin, radiance, radius, excuse me, direction, distance, and layer mask. And for the radius, remember it's a 0.3 because we need a line kind of going out. Um, the way that, that I can understand this, let me see if I can get my little marker doohickey here, um, and I'll change that to red. So a circle is 300. Oops. 360 degrees, right? Sorry, that's a terrible circle. Try again. A circle is 360 degrees. It has some hair, whatever. And what this is doing is it's saying, I need you to send out a line that looks like this, right? It looks like that. It's not a straight line. It's a 0 0.3, 0 0.3 line. So in 360 degrees, 0.3 is essentially a line. It's not very big, but supposedly it is more reliable to send out something that's like a cone, even though it's a teeny tiny cone. If you zoomed in way far on it, it would be bigger than it would be to send out a line. So that radius is a 0.3 radius going downwards. And we need it to go down, right? So the way that we do this is we, which direction is it gonna go? It's gonna go down on the Y. So if it was going up, it'd be a positive one. If it was going down, it's a negative one. We need it to go 1.1 units. So for yourself, you are one. We need it to go 0.1 more than you. So 1.1 unit down. And for the layer, uh, if you remember we had to set up the layers, if you skip that step, um, you might have a problem here. This was frustrating for me. I had to figure this out. Layer mask, 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 literal, and we're going to set that to platforms. Remember, we set that up earlier. So um, we are going to where, where are we supposed to be shooting this circle cast from? We need you to send it from yourself. Position, get position, transform, get position of yourself. Remember, this is on the the player uh, script. Excuse me, the player graph. Um, we need to send a ray downwards, and when you get down, if you hit something, so this little target, I think, is when you hit something, so ray cast hit, that's what it's calling for, ray cast hit 2D, then uh, we need you to do something. So when you collide, 
Let's see if what we got to collide with. When you collide with something, and there's another step in here, uh, not equal. So we're going to look for a not equal, and I'll explain why in just a second. When it's not equal to null, n u l l null, uh, then we want you to do something. So what this is doing, which it all went all dark on me. So let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So what it's saying is we need you to send a line out from yourself downwards for this far, so just a little bit further than yourself, and see if you're hitting the platform layer, which these little things you're standing on are the platform layer. If you collide with them, then we're going to do something. But if it's null, which means if you don't get a collision, if, if the answer is no, if the answer is nothing, if the answer is zero, then we're going to do something else. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to jump. So let's take this graph right over here. Let's move all of this over. Ah, come on, dude. Move. Move it over a little bit. And uh, I know this is not going to work properly. I don't get this why it does it like that you have to zoom in. And I hate that because I want to make sure it's right. All right, there we go. All right. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to drag this out. It'll let me do that. There we go. Drag the input button out. And we're going to break that. You right click on it to break it. Uh, remember when it says, in, when you jump, we're going to branch. This is kind of a true false statement here. Branch. So when something happens and it's true, when you jump, I want you to jump. But, wait just a second. If you're not hitting the ground don't jump don't let yourself jump that's not that's no bueno that's not gonna work right so this is what this is doing shoot a ray out if it don't hit the ground if when you when you shoot the ray out it's not hitting anything then don't do that so when you notice when it's false false doesn't do anything false goes nowhere All right so it breaks that don't let yourself jump but on a jump jump but if you're not getting the beam back don't jump again. That's what that's doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and name uh, this. Uh, actually, it's going to tell us something else. So setting the jump sprite, we are going to use that very same thing. Uh, let's see here. Where's my walk animation, right? Uh, let's move all of, hopefully this all will move down. Let's see if we, nope, it's not all gonna move down. So I'm gonna move, grab all of that and hopefully we can move that down now. Thank you, goodness gracious. Ugh, frustrating. We're going to set our animator to, oops, I think it is, something else has to be fixed. Just real quick, let me read up real fast. Okay, I remember, remember now. All right, so uh, the problem is, is we need to move this jump real quick. So let's fix that. We're gonna move our jump because I think in their tutorial they had it moved over to the left side for some weird reason. And when I followed it along that way, it was fine, but when I didn't do that, it wasn't working. All right, so what you need to do is you need to select these objects. So everything but the branch in front of the jump. So we're gonna copy that, copy selection, and then we're gonna go over here to the right and we're gonna paste that selection right there. Move it up a little bit. And um, basically what it's saying is, is whenever we do this ray cast thing where you go down, um, if it is not equal to nothing, then what we're gonna do is we're going to set the bool on the animator. Remember that animator thing that we did? Uh, but there is a new animation, grounded, not speed. We're gonna use grounded this time. So we're looking for the grounded. Make sure you spell that correctly or it's not gonna work. Uh, when you animate, go up. So jump when you're animating. Remember this is all set up in the animator that it will do the jump animation and it will go back to landing whenever it's supposed to. Uh, but when it's not equal to that, when you're not touching the ground, don't go to grounded. When, when it is touching the ground, stay grounded. So that, that will help us in your animator sequence. So um, if we test our game now, we should see that when we jump, 
it makes a kind of a stupid face when it jumps. Hoo-hoo, yeah, all right. And when it lands, it will stop doing that. And if you jump on the spikes, you'll notice nothing happens. It switches places, but now you can't jump again because the spikes are not a platform. Spikes are something entirely different. But when you jump, it does work. So um, just real quickly, let's get into uh, something called a super unit. If you read the tutorial, what it explains is, is that there is a principle in um, scripting called dry. Don't repeat yourself. And if you remember, we took this right here and we copied and pasted it. This is the paste. The copy was over here. So this is repeating yourself. And that's fine if um, you only use it in two places. But the problem is, is that we're going to use this ground collision check a bunch. We're going to use it a bunch. So we want to make what's called basically um, a super unit out of that. And so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go to our assets folder. We're going to go to our macro folder. And we're going to right click and we're going to create a new bolt flow macro. And we're going to call that ground check. Let's make sure we spell it right. And so what we're going to do with that is we are going to copy. Uh, so let's go back to our player animator. We're going to copy this right here. Whoops. Because this is the same thing as that over there. We're going to copy that. So control C. We're going to paste it in here. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our player controller. We're going to delete this. And then we're going to grab our ground check right here. Oops. Come on, player. Ground check. And we're going to drop it right there. Now, now, you've noticed there's not anything. We can't do anything with it yet. And there's a reason why. What we need to do is go back into the ground check by double-clicking it. And um, we're going to have to set some uh, abilities on it. So um, let me make sure that I got all that entered in correctly. I think I do. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to right click, you're going to add a unit to the end here, and you're going to hit output. Output, right there. Now, on the right side over here, uh, if we look, the output has a control output and a value input. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a value input. And we're going to call it grounded. Label is grounded. And this is important because that's how that animator is going to work. And the summary, you can just kind of put whatever you want here. Uh, they explain typing in whether the current object is grounded. So you can put whatever you want there. Um, it is uh, a regular, we don't have to hide the label. Uh, and it is a Boolean. Boolean is a true or false statement. So if you'll notice now, that has made it available to where we can tell something whether it's true or false. Now if you go back to your uh, player controller, you'll notice now that you have an ability to uh, throw this out. So look, if it is true, then it will set the grounded, um, the grounded uh, tag it will set that as grounded if it's true. And did you notice here, whoops, let me break it up, break it real quick, that that is the value is true or false. So you could set it that way if you wanted to. But the purple is the Boolean. We're going to set that to true. But we have another place that we need to fix that, if you remember. Um, before we do that, it says navigate back to the parent player graph using the breadcrumbs in the tool bar, and you'll see the super unit has now grounded output port. We can use that to connect for both double jump prevention and the jump animation sprite. So let me figure out where I'm at on that. Okay, I have a jump, so they have it as add force, but I am going to change that to jump. So we're deleting that. We're gonna put a ground check right here. Come on, dude, get out of there. Uh, ground check, there we go and if it is false. So basically what this is doing is everything in that is going to carry out. So it's called a super unit. And if you'll notice now that when we jump, it should still have the same effect. 
That's called don't repeat yourself or dry. And they explain that in the in the tutorial and hopefully that was helpful to you. That is the same thing. This little ground check is the same thing as uh, doing it the other way. But it's better because now we only have to change it in one place if we ever have to make um, an adjustment. So that's what that is for. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on to the next video.